and welcome to Round Robin. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is Fort Monroe, and we have two guests, Kirsten Spaulding, who's the park superintendent, and Glenn Oder, who's the head of the Fort Monroe Authority. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. So, it's springtime, the weather's great, I'm ready to get outside. Last year was such an incredible success with so many folks coming out to Fort Monroe and not quite sure what they would find. Now they know right. just how beautiful it is. The weather that we've had just recently that has warmed up, folks are coming out like crazy. So in working with the Fort Monroe Authority and the Fort Monroe Foundation and the Casemate Museum, we've got some really exciting stuff to come up. Um, probably our most exciting thing, though, is the Junior Ranger Program. If you're a fan of the National Park System, you've probably got young ones, or we'll have our inaugural Junior Ranger Program beginning at the end of April. And so that'll just be a fantastic way to kick off National Park Week with Junior Ranger Day. So very exciting. Now, for people not familiar with the Junior Ranger Program, tell us a little bit about either in, in general or what, because I know the activities are different at every park. Absolutely. Sometimes they're very nature oriented. I assume they'd be a little more historical oriented at Fort Monroe. Well, that's the wonderful thing about Fort Monroe. I think that's why Fort Monroe is for everyone. Um, whether you're going to live here or whether you're just going to come for a visit, you can do either the nature or the history, but you can also do the recreation in the area. Mm -hmm. So the Junior Ranger program is really going to follow that same thing. You're going to go along with Sergeant Patches, who was a dog back in the 1940s who actually served at Fort Monroe. That and is Sergeant, so cool. Absolutely. Sergeant Patches is going to be your guide through Fort Monroe. So you're going to learn both about the history of Fort Monroe, but also some of the natural landscapes and that sort of thing about the park. And if you're successful in completing the Junior Ranger booklet for Fort Monroe, you will get your own Junior Ranger badge, which is a really neat little thing. It is unique to Junior your ranger program at Fort Monroe, you cannot get it at any of the other national park areas. So when you see this badge, you'll understand. Yeah, that's wonderful. I know um, my kids, we, we did a lot of that. And in fact, when my kids were too young, sometimes we still did the junior ranger thing. Absolutely. Because then you get to do it. And right. you, you may not get the patch when you're a grown up, but. <laughs> <laughs> or but maybe you know, so. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's sort of a different guide through a park and a way to learn and to do the activities. And like we had the little backpack things that you would check out that had some of the supplemental materials and information in it. It's just a wonderful program. Absolutely. You know, the National Park Service is known as one of the leaders in the nation for non-traditional education. And we're the places where things actually happened. Uh, you can actually come out and do a saline study of the waters. You can come out and stand where Robert E. Lee was standing with his young wife, Mary. You can come out and be in the landscape where things actually happen. So I invite folks towards the end of April to ex go over to the Casemate Museum. Again, through a partnership with the Fort Monroe Foundation, we're going to be able to hand out those Junior Ranger booklets, as always, for free. I know. What a great deal. Exactly. And then whether you're a Junior Ranger, a Super Junior Ranger, <laughs> or a not-so-Junior Ranger, really the idea is that you learn about Fort Monroe and you become even more ensconced in what it is and why it matters to our nation. And you know, it is one of those things where kids don't realize they're learning. They're yeah. just out there having fun and doing things yep. and, and the learning comes along with yep. it. Indeed. Indeed. So I enjoy that. Well, what other sorts of uh, nature programs or ranger-led events do you have planned for this You know, year? We're, we're working directly with the programming offices at Fort Monroe Authority. And so we're going to be doing a kite program in April. So it's those sorts of enhancements that I think are really special along with so much that the Fort Monroe Authority is already doing with the summer concert series and such. So you guys are going to be sponsoring some um, some special events this summer, as you did last summer. We did. Last summer was very exciting for us. It was all everything that we did last summer. We did for the first time. Everything from uh, you know coordinating the Easter sunrise service with the church uh, to the flag raising ceremony. We had Adam Goodhart come as a speaker. Mm -hmm. But then I think the highlight of the year was when we did the uh, summer concerts. You know, I remember. Shortly after I got to Fort Monroe, the last military concert by Tradoc was done at Fort Monroe, and there was lots of weeping because everybody thought that it was over. And it was for the Tradoc band. The Tradoc band has moved, moved to, yeah. to Fort Eustis. What we found was that there are other military bands in the area, and they all have loved the concept of being able to play at Fort Monroe and in the gazebo. And so they came to us, and we were able to recreate that last year, and we're doing it again this year. Uh, we're going to have around 10 or 11 concerts. We haven't been able to fill up all Thursday nights. I think only one is still vacant, but we've got about 10 of the military bands will be coming to Fort Monroe. 
playing in the gazebo on Thursday night at seven o'clock. Uh, we usually get about 500 people who come out there and That's enjoy the evening. That's a good evenings. crowd. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the Moat Monsters. That's our Boy Scout troop. They traditionally sell hot, hot sell dogs. Hot and, dogs. Oh, yeah. and they sell the hot dogs there. And so we're very excited to continue to let, to let them do that. And then we end the year with uh, the Virginia Symphony uh, at Fort Monroe, which last year was the first time that we were, were ever able to do the Virginia Symphony at Fort Monroe. They um, did four concerts over the Labor Day weekend, but when they found out about the history at Fort Monroe, they, where they were supposed to do the same concert in all four venues over the course of the weekend, they actually wrote a special concert just for Fort Monroe, and they really celebrated the contraband history and the presence of Lincoln. It was very, very exciting to see the people coming back to Fort Monroe. And, and right. I, would I think say, I had our GIS guy map it for me, and it's 1.1 or 1.2 from the Chamberlain to where you're supposed to stop, to the, to the ocean breeze maybe. Yeah, the, to the Bay Breeze, yeah, to the Bay breeze Bay all the way to the top. Okay. You know, and even with all of the numbers and the increase, it still doesn't feel crowded there. Mm -hmm. And that's it's the- It's such a big place. It is, it really has a capacity to, to handle the Hampton Roads area and all the folks that really want to come out and enjoy the space. And, and one other thing that I should mention as well, is, as Glenn was talking about the concert series coming up and last year's concentration on, on celebrating and, and commemorating the contraband decision of uh, 1861. This year we're going to be doing another celebration at the same time period in May. Um, we, um, we're very excited as well about the YMCA day camp uh, that will be coming back to Fort Monroe. That was an amazing partnership that we put together last year between you know, the Army caretaker who still controls the base, the National Park Service, the Fort Monroe Authority, and the City of Hampton. The four of us coming together is this municipal state you know, government partnership to get together so that um, children, just like in the Ranger program, mm -hmm. so that children could start to build their history with Fort Monroe. It's not just any kayak launch. What well, we are going for the gold on this. Oh, that's it's nice. It's an aluminum floating dock that actually will have a multi accessibility options to it. Uh, you actually would place your kayak in locking rollers, a transfer seat, so you could actually handicap people could actually go from a wheelchair or some other uh, facility straight out onto the kayak and drop straight down. The rollers get disengaged, and then you can roll your kayak. Uh, directly into deep enough water to paddle. Wow, It is state-of-the-art gold standard. We're very excited about this. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's it's those sort of collaborative um, working efforts, I think, that are really going to see Fort Monroe blossom. It's It's been an amazing space for the community already. I think that working collaboratively, it's going to be even greater than we can envision today. It's, it's kind of a no-holds-bar kind of thing. Uh, look forward and look up for Fort Monroe. All right, now I'm gonna ask you a tough question. Is Go sequestration hurting your funding or your ability to grow at this point, the programming that you have? Sequestration is real, and um, we are needing to curtail some of our big plans immediately, but we're hopeful that the future will see some relief. You know, and like Glenn has suggested through the Fort Monroe Foundation and, and philanthropic giving, to the Fort Monroe area, we can still get a lot of things done. I may not be able to be uh, right there with the federal dollars, but maybe there's other ways that through in-kind contributions, the federal government can play a larger role. That's great, that's great. Okay, now I know that, that you guys are gonna be sending us your events so that we can put them out on the weekly e-news we do every Thursday. But yeah. in the meantime, if someone wants to look ahead and find out what's going on and, and when, what are your websites? What's the best way to know what you're doing? Well, obviously we, have, we, we each have our websites, so the National Park Service website and the Fort Monroe Authority, but I can't help but mention, don't forget the Chamberlain Hotel if people should be checking the Chamberlain Hotel and their website. They have incredible special dinners and their buffets. Um, very, very exciting things happen at the Chamberlain Hotel that people can be part of. And people it, tend to think, again, that that's a private facility and, and forget that the big restaurant is open to the public most of the time and that there are other things that go on there that are open to the public. I, I, Walking, touring, events, concerts, going to be a very busy spring and summer at Fort Monroe. Indeed. Okay, well, thank you for coming by today and thanks for sharing these plans with us. And I look forward to seeing both of you at Fort Monroe uh, this spring and summer. And I look forward to seeing you out there too. I hope you'll join us. Thanks. <laughs>